Welcome to Phil and Caroline's last show in the garden. In today's show, I'll be showing you my wood pile and doing a little bit of correction on the shed. Caroline will take you on a final tour of all the things that are growing here in the garden. Got a little courgette plant that's ready to go out. There'll be some tips on how to live in harmony and be helpful to the little creatures that share this beautiful space. Now you may wonder why there's a stick in my watering can and there's a perfectly reasonable explanation. And I'll share with you a few of the projects in the pipeline that'll be using our mudlarking finds. They will be getting used. I've got a project planned for the bricks. barbecue is slowly being exposed which is good seeming as the weather has come so nice because the wood pile is going down done a number of projects that you've seen repairing the shed building the compost heaps making good on the raised beds etc and that's all using timber every bit I've used in the garden has been reclaimed from other places where I've done new repairs like the fence panel that I put in with timber we'd bought prior to the lockdown but the pile isn't just going down because by nature, Caroline and I are scavengers more than we're mudlarkers. And I think that's the part of us that was appealed to by the whole idea of mudlarking. And just over here, I can show you some timber that didn't come from our garden. It actually has been picked up as we've gone around on our walks. This timber, this piece here, has a nice little latch on it it's got Ooh, quite a, a few latch. rather large meaty screws going through but it's holding together two extremely useful pieces of wood they are three by two possibly a bit bigger then we've got another piece of identical wood to that single piece this carries the bonus of a couple of good inches mm -hmm. now you may not see those as good inches eh? no they are a little bit bent no 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 but to me, they're good inches. That's what I call a bad inch, okay? That is an inch that even I am willing to say is beyond use. Yes. <laughs> Actually not. It's beyond use as a hinge, but it'll be very useful as a bracket if I want to hold two things together or as a washer. Because another thing I use for washers are old Yale keys. They make good washers as well. So we've got a couple of inches that just need straightening and a piece of timber. And here's another piece of timber, a nice piece of board here. And that board, for one thing, I'm going to cut a piece and make a kickboard for the bottom of the 
gate that I repaired a few weeks ago. But there on the back is some more timber. So this log gets separated and used. And it's not just things people throw away and leave free for collection. The piece of timber just here came from a mudlark. I picked this up on the river. I think it was the last video we did before the lockdown. Quite likely, yes. Yes, I believe it was. Now, you never know what you'll come across when you go mudlarking. You know, Caroline always says she never knew she needed something till she opened the Argos catalogue. Well, sometimes you come down on the beaches of these rivers and you haven't got a clue what you'll find. During the storm, we've had some serious damage to our fencing. And this, this piece of wood will be perfect for one of the repair jobs. It's washed from somebody's garden, it's come from somewhere, or something, but... and I can't return it. No. It's probably travelled a few miles, but that's going in my garden to repair my fence. And I brought it home and we got it into the car. I had to take a piece off it to get it in the car. And this will be used, along with the other pieces, for running repairs on the fence. This will make a good back piece. And at the end of the day, if it survived in the river, it'll survive on my fence. There you go. Scavenging, collecting, recycling, repurposing, call it what you like. At the end of the day, it's a better world when you use it rather than throw it. Well, there we are. Priority number one, access to the barbecue. Under our cover here, ready to go. And I think it'll be in use pretty soon. So let's have a look at our tomato plants. They're looking really well, coming on nicely. There you've got two pepper plants and more tomato plants. It won't be long and I'll be needing to tie these in. This was Happy. Now Happy has germinated but really isn't looking very well. I don't think anything is going to come of that seed, which is a shame. But still, because one of the plant pots had two seeds in, I have given this smallest one the name of Happy 2. So Happy 2 is doing fine. Stay tuned right to the end and I'll tell you which was the tomato that grew the tallest in the six weeks of our show. This is my watering can and there's a stick in it. Now you may wonder why there's a stick in my watering can and there's a perfectly reasonable explanation. Once I had my watering can in the greenhouse from the night before to warm up the water so it's not a shock when you actually water your plants in the morning. A mouse in the night had climbed in and drowned and I was really sad. So since then I put a stick in my watering can all the time so if a mouse ends up in there he can swim to the stick, climb out and it'll save his life. As you know this shed has been going for well over 20 years but it's suffering with a bit of settlement at the moment and my door wasn't opening too good. So I'm just going to raise the corner and pack it up a little. And it'll be as good as new. Well, nearly. Having raised the left hand side of the shed, I now need to raise the right hand side of the shed. I've already managed to get one block under, but I'm just going to use a pad just to take out the last of this difference in the top. Because I've got my pinch bar on under a piece of wood, on top of a piece of wood, which if you do this, Let's have a look. You see it? Just press there, it lifts the shed. One little piece of wood do you think is going to fix that? Possibly. It's very impressive if, if it does. If you have a look at the top here, you can see that as I do that, I've already closed that gap an inch with oh, one yes. piece of wood and now I'm going to go oh, hopefully to there. That's the theory. Mm. Let's see if it works. What I'm going to do is press down, use my knee, and now hopefully get a little bit of wood under. Pick that little bit up. That's fallen down. There you go. That's nice and neat under there. It's on top of the piece I put in. I just ease off. Creaking. Sitting on a brick underneath, so hopefully it'll hold. Here we go. Moment of truth. Settle down. It Are we looking on the top of the door? It hasn't fallen over, so let's have a look. So there we have it. A much reduced gap. 
and a door that opens. Well done. There we go. I didn't know if we were going to make it. I thought the shed was going to fall apart at one point. It was creaking quite a bit. But it's going to live to fight another day. Good old shed. A little update on some of the things in my greenhouse. I've got more basil plants transplanted there. These are three sweet peppers I have that I'm going to try in the garden this year. They are spare anyway and our summers are not usually hot enough. But it's such a lovely May. Maybe we could get some peppers off those this year from outside. Got a little courgette plant that's ready to go out. These are my hollyhocks growing nicely. There's a very small one over there. Nothing in those yet. My larkspur are finally looking like plants. They've got their true leaves. Their seed leaves were up last time I showed you. This plant went outside. I didn't put it in the ground and I didn't bring it in and we had a severe frost. So it really got damaged. I'm going to hang on to it and see if I can resurrect it in the greenhouse. Give it a bit of a boost. But it's not looking very well, is it? I've got some pinks that I had in water until the roots grew and popped them in these pots. So they are hopefully coming. Other seeds that are waiting to grow. And my foxgloves are just about ready to be put into individual containers. More hollyhocks. Ooh, I'm going to have lots of hollyhocks next year. I've got these Cosmos that are very big now. They're going into my front garden. I've cut down all the leaves from the tulips and the daffodils and the patch is waiting for these to go in later today. A few more bits and pieces that just haven't got planted yet. So let's have a look here. We've got this squash. Avalon is doing really well. Spider on my hand. And this is my courgette, which is now in and looking very healthy. And under here, in there, I'll take this off, are some lettuce. Now, I don't normally put lettuce under bottles like this because if they get too hot, they'll bolt, which means they'll start to form a flower to make seeds because they panic. It stresses the lettuce. But we had a lot of birds all flapping around on this area and on the garden. And I thought, oh, that's sweet. They're eating all the slugs. No, they weren't. They were eating all the lettuce. So I put these on to protect my lettuce from the boots. No sign of the sweet corn yet, but my courgette there is looking very well. A few grotty bits on the bottom leaves, but I'm not too worried about those. There's something that is going to be featuring in our craft section of our mudlarking videos. Over here, my potatoes are coming on really well. It's time to lift the bag a bit more, put more soil in. These ones, because they're in garden soil, are not coming on as well as these ones, but they do seem to be stronger plants. So I'm wondering which are going to be the more successful. My beans are coming along nicely, and I've got some spares too, because the mice didn't steal all the beans. They were just slow, so I do have a few coming through that I planted before. These are runner beans. And these are French beans. Over here is where the worst of the decimation of the lettuce has happened. Very sad, but I popped some covers on the ones that had been eaten and they are starting to come back a little bit. But the ones that weren't covered are coming back much slower. Onions are doing well, they need a bit of weeding. And the sweet corn is finally getting away. Just after we planted this, the temperature dropped, so we covered it, but it still wasn't very happy. You can see by the yellow leaves, but now it's starting to flourish, so I think we're going to get a good crop there. Over in this bed, we've just added a few onions that I'd already had in little pots ready to go in. And we've got some more lettuce under bottles to keep the birds off. And over there is another squash plant. Our bean tub is looking very healthy, but only because I added these plants. It turns out the mice did eat just about every bean I put in. The flowers are starting to come nicely now and hopefully soon I'll have a wigwam full of tasty beans. Now as we've said this will be the last of our shows today for the garden, dedicated to the garden because now it's a matter of waiting, watering, watching and then eating and enjoying. 
and we'll give you little updates as we go but one of the things we will be bringing to you throughout our time is projects that I'm going to be doing projects using things like this stick that we picked up in the rapids over in Switzerland or this which has now been identified as a piece of an extending ladder that we picked out of the river just a week ago and of course I've got ideas for my bricks they will be getting used I've got a project plan for the bricks also I'm hoping to make use of our beautiful French find that's going to be going in as part of another project and I've got an idea for some of the bits of pottery that we find Ooh. the larger pieces that we can't use on small projects indoors I've got an outdoor plan for those so lots to come and of course I think Caroline showed you in her roundup that we've got our big piece of architectural ivy is what I like to call it and that's going to be a part of the project too so hope you enjoy seeing those projects as they come together we'll be posting them as part of our mudlarking videos well let's get back to it and see what else is happening here in the garden Pots are coming along now. This trailing lobelia is starting to get a real length on it, so it's going to start tumbling over nicely soon. I've got this is an upright geranium, and either side I've got two trailing geraniums. I've crammed this tub with flowers because if you just put one or two, they look a little bit neglected and lonely. But if you absolutely cram them, then they go, turn into a big, huge ball of flowers and colour. So I like to fill them as full as possible. And sure have some buds coming on our first trailing geranium. I planted two of these planters. We got an upright geranium, upright geranium, trailing geranium, two marigolds and a cosmos. No, oh, two cosmos. So this should look glorious in another couple of weeks. And here is my big azalea. I told you it would look fabulous. I look forward to this every year. It's so pretty. It actually looks luminous. I don't know if the camera will pick it up, but it is absolutely stunning. And especially now it's contrasted against my light and fluffy Acer that we've trimmed to within an inch of its life because it was too thick. And now the birds have flown. There's no sign of them. I'm going to get in there and tackle all that undergrowth and claim back all that garden, probably about 10 feet worth of garden, all grown over with rhododendron. Well, that's it, folks. That's the end of our series in the garden. Of course, we're going to be around. We've got back on the river and we'll be mudlarking and we'll be sharing updates from the garden in the mudlarking shows, as well as showing you some of those projects that we do using the finds that have come from the rivers and from the beaches. I hope you've enjoyed it as much as we have. We've had a wonderful time over this six week series, bringing back to life this beautiful space that had been neglected turning it now into something that is productive as well as beautiful. Our own little paradise, which we enjoy so much. And if you've enjoyed it as much as we have, then please give us that thumbs up and let us know. Feel free to leave a comment. And don't forget, if you subscribe, costs nothing, just press a button and you'll be notified of every update we give, every video we put out, every show that we make. And it's always a joy to have all of you along with us. And don't forget, if you've got friends out there who'd enjoy it as much as you have, share the videos with them too. But until the next time, as always, and we mean it, have fun. Bye. Bye.